There's only one way to begin my remarks, and that is to say thank you very much to AFSA and to the Awards Committee for so honoring me. And I'm overwhelmed with gratitude, but also with a great deal of humility. And I'm particularly pleased to associate my wife, uh, Yuan Chong, uh, with the award because she has always been the wind beneath my sails, and she's also brought me back to reality many times because she believes, as perhaps others in the audience do, that behind every successful man stands a surprised wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also like to thank our son Brian, who's now a Cape Town resident for the past 20 years. I left, but he stayed. And our daughter Gabrielle, who has uh, been in UN peacekeeping for the last 15 years, like she, I follow her, she didn't follow me. And she's now currently uh, doing peacekeeping with UNAMA in Afghanistan. Um, so I would just say a couple of introductory remarks, and I want to make three points. First of all, uh, I'm deeply humbled because both my wife and I know that there are so many others, some close friends, a number of them here today, who are so much more deserving than we in terms of their own contributions. Uh, we've not served in the large posts or dealt with the major issues, so it's particularly humbling to be so, uh, so recognized. The second introductory remark, just to simply say that uh, I think all of us know we stand on the shoulders of those who went before and also those who were with us at the time uh, and all of those over the past five decades in Africa who supported us and made us look a lot better than we deserve to look. Uh, I think particularly of James Zinka, who was my OMS and personal assistant for some 22 years, and I think probably the finest international public servant that either I or Ambassador Perkins know. Um, so I'm very grateful for that uh, half century uh, that I've been able to provide service since joining in 1963. Uh, time when Washington was still reeling from the McCarthy period and everybody was over at Arlington Tower studying Vietnamese, it seemed a pervading atmosphere then that at times seems occasionally to resurface in today's Washington. Um, I would just like to also say a word of thanks to the U.S. government and the Foreign Service because it's really I rather than you, it's I who should be thanking our government for giving me the opportunity to serve for these past uh, nearly 50 years. Uh, Mine, like yours, has been the great good fortune to be able to serve our country and our people, uh, in my case, in an admittedly very modest manner and in many very minor support roles. Uh, but throughout all of it, the Foreign Service and this department have been unfailingly generous to me. Um, I'd like to use the few remaining minutes just to renew my gratitude to our government and to this department and this service for making possible things for me that I never dreamed possible or I could even dream of as a young farm boy uh, growing up in the South. Um, and if I were to be asked, would you do it all over again, uh, the answer is resoundingly yes. I wouldn't want to because it might come out even worse. But uh, yes, I would do it over again, and I say that for, there are many reasons, I'd just like three and then quickly sit down. First of all, Foreign Service gives us the opportunity to serve and to serve globally. I remember calling a mine in the personnel at the time in the 80s, just after the U.S. Civil Service Commission had been renamed OPM, the Office of Personnel Management, he said to me yeah, one day, uh, service used to be our middle name. And I think we should never forget that service is our last name in the Foreign Service. That is our major function. And about three years ago in a similar setting, I tried to make the point that this diplomacy is the indispensable public service. I still believe this to be the case, and it surely has to be a consolation to all of us gathered here today that amidst globalization, and the digital revolution. Diplomacy has not only survived, it is daily being revalidated as an indispensable discipline and art in managing relations in our very complicated world. 
Second reason I say yes, I'll do it all over again is because of the opportunity that the Foreign Service gives us for lifelong learning. Yes, learning languages, yes, continuing to learn history and to keep up to date, but also a chance to continue to learn from our experiences. We just had just came back from Haiti late last night, and we've already discovered some of the things that we did wrong in the wake of the uh, horrible earthquake and the cholera outbreak. We just reassessed what we did wrong in Libya. We took 250,000 migrant workers home, another $25 million, 1,000 charter flights, 18 dangerous sea evacuations from Israel and Tripoli, but we still made a lot of mistakes. And we must continue to learn from those, and that's what the Foreign Service is all about, continuing to try to perfect the art of what it is that we do. So I'm, I'm very grateful to have had that opportunity. Uh, we learn from our failures, and I can cite you many of mine. I did here once before, three years ago. Uh, but that's an important part. And finally, the third most important part for me, and I was delighted, uh, Ambassador Carson, to uh, use that phrase of Mr. Mandela, because he did once say in my presence, just after leaving prison, that he felt at that moment as if he were in physical contact with history. And for me, that is the essence of what brings us to this great service that, uh, that we have in common. Uh, we are among the privileged few who are called to a noble task, sometimes as observers, sometimes as reporters, as witnesses, sometimes as actors. In the end, they'll only think, they'll ask you as well, was this person a good Macbeth or mediocre Macbeth? Or do they remember that we even played Macbeth? So we're on that stage for a short period, but it's wonderful because at that time, uh, wherever we are, we're at the epicenter of those events there. And these are events that more often than not affect the lives of many people. I was able to report to President Martelli in Haiti yesterday for the first time. The number of people living in temporary shelter in Haiti now is below 400,000. Still a lot of people, but it was 1.5 million. So we have to continue to work to try to help people. Um, so in conclusion, first of all, diplomacy remains a noble undertaking in public service to which we fortunate few have been privileged to be called. Secondly, the Foreign Service embarks us upon simultaneously a lifetime of continuous learning. And thirdly, this remarkable career offers us unprecedented opportunities to live history and impose its responsibilities to be worthy of our calling. So I apologize for the length of that. My mother always said I couldn't make a short speech.